Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And today, my, I'm not going to lie, my mind, my mind was kind of blown. And I don't say that very often, especially about something like this. But my mind was relatively blown when I watched the Detective Pikachu trailer. Uh, I, 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 look, let me let me be honest with you. I did not have high expectations for what this was going to be. Right. I did not have high expectations for what to expect uh, on watching the Detective Pikachu trailer. I thought it was just going to be something that was going to be aimed at like little kids, like like the first few movies were. And, you know, and I've been playing Pokemon for over 20 years, so I'd see the movie regardless. But I wasn't like hyped up for it, like like my siblings are, because they're all a lot younger than me. But after seeing the trailer, oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is this movie? And why do I want absolutely more of it? First off, let's take a look here at, at just the at just the logo. It just to me, this logo absolutely oozes cool. It does. It oozes cool to me. It just looks like it's gonna be like it's gonna be hip. You know what I mean? It looks like it's it's pretty indicative of the type of of, of CG we're going to expect in this film. Uh, and and quite frankly, I I just I'm very happy with just the way that looks, right? But let's take a look here. Let's go through the trailer a little bit. I'll give you guys my thoughts on it, my breakdown of it. Uh, we're going to go through kind of scene by scene a little bit here. So it starts off, and we're in an opening shot of the city. Now, uh, as we can see here, you know, you get uh, a good look at, at at a young Charmander, right? And just just right off the bat, you can see the CG. Uh, and look at the the Pokemon displays on uh, you know on the on the, uh, the the wall over there to the right. You've got the different types of advertisements, um, and you see like this is a world inhabited by both humans and Pokemon, and that's something that we knew was going to be in the movie, but it was just interesting to see nonetheless that it actually legitimately was going to have them living side by side again live action that my brain is having trouble still figuring out what's going to come from the live action portion of this. Uh, then we get this shot right here, which is a real quick shot of, I don't know the girl's name, but this is going to clearly be the female, uh, uh co-lead, the co-star in the film, uh, the love interest, if you will. And you've got a Psyduck right there looking like a pretty, pretty badass Psyduck, right? Like a pretty badass Psyduck, but they're at a, they're at a fair. They're at a, they're at a, uh, a parade. Cause you see, there's a, a, a Jigglypuff, um, behind and uh, I I don't remember the purple Pokemon right there to the left, but you can see that uh, clearly there's a lot going on. You have a guy right behind her wearing what appears to be a Squirtle uh, costume. I'm assuming he's going to be uh, someone who would be for the Squirtle uh, parade float where you've got the uh, you've got the people in purple right there for whatever the purple Pokemon is. So you can kind of see there's going to be a theme there. I can only imagine what the Jigglypuff ones are going to be. So so you've got that. You've got a, a setup of kind of a world where they celebrate Pokemon. That's kind of how I see that the way that they celebrate the Pokemon uh, for living side by side with them. And yet I'm soon, I'm assuming that this girl, whoever she is, uh, she is teaming up with Psyduck. That is her Pokemon, uh, you know, and that's going to be what they deal with quite a bit. And don't get me wrong, I love me some Psyduck. So I'm totally on board for what comes next. Uh, then we got a couple little, a, a couple like little montage shots of the main character, uh, hearing something about his father. His father was a great detective. His father, if he was anything like his father and he's like, I'm nothing like my father, as he says, uh, and it cuts to him rooting in his room where you can see shot, uh, photos on the back of different championships. Uh, and you know, they made the mention that he himself wanted to be, uh, wanted to go to one of those, uh, wanted to be a Pokemon trainer, be Pokemon master. Uh, we can see here the, uh, Sanoa uh, championship 26, uh, here he's, uh, you know, poster in between, uh, his, his P his Pikachu ears on his Pokemon bed. And what that tells me is that the main character, uh, uh, the guy, the actor's name is Justin, but you know, his role in this film is going to be one that's like, he wanted to be like an Ash Ketchum. I'm sure Ash is going to be mentioned uh, at some point in time. He wanted to be a Pokemon master. He wanted to do all these things. Something happened in his life. Something with his father happened in his life that prevented him from going, uh, to the event, what prevented him from going, uh, and following his dreams. And then we get this shot right here of a city rail transit ticket that is never used, 
right? That's that's never used. And I don't know if this is if this is early on, like this is something that he just didn't do. This is something that like he, uh, you know, this is like maybe a final gift from his dad because they, they insinuate that his father has disappeared. They insinuate that uh, his father is missing and that's why he teams up with Detective Pikachu. Uh, but I don't know if this is something necessarily that was given to him before his father disappeared or at the moment in time when he finds it in his room. But looking at this particular shot of uh, the, uh, the, the leave in town, uh, uh, rhyme city rail, right? This departure, we can, we can look to see the date of issue is 12. It's going from leave in town to rhyme city. Uh, and it's, it's a, it looks like it's a one day ticket. It's a coach seat. It's paid, um, uh, $400 is what it cost. And we, we don't quite know, uh, if this is when this was, Right. We don't know to what to to where in the, the Pokemon time of events this takes place. But because it's 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 untorn, because it's not looked at, I do believe that ultimately uh, this is a situation where he is his dad is dead or his dad is gone. Um, and so he essentially goes and says, all right, like I just never went. I never followed my dreams because I was so worried about my dad. And then of course he hears something. He goes in the living room and we meet, uh, we meet Pikachu for the first time voiced by Ryan Reynolds. And what I think this is like probably the best, this is my favorite shot of the whole thing. Uh, when he's like, you know, trying to basically, you know, mime to him or pantomime to him because they can't understand each other. Uh, if you don't drop the stapler, I will electrocute you. And I thought that was pretty damn funny because Ryan Reynolds is very much trying to channel uh, his younger Deadpool for this. It does kind of sound like Deadpool in the body of Pikachu, but it somehow works. And of course, uh, you know, main character is freaked out. He doesn't quite, uh, you know, know what's going on. We get this, uh, we we get this shot of, uh, of, of a missing, uh, uh, you know, of a missing Squirtle and a couple missing Pokemon. And I don't want, I don't really know necessarily where this is. Uh, in terms of the movie, but we can see that there's a water heater down there and uh, it's an old water heater. So to me, it looks like it is, in fact, in the police station. This is just a shot when like the kid goes and talks to uh, his dad's former partner or something, because there's a bunch of awards that they see on the wall that he was a great detective. And that's something that's just something that's there. We don't quite know much more about that, but essentially that's why uh, Pikachu wants to work with the kid. He's like, look, we need, he's like, you don't need a Pokemon fine, but you need the world's greatest detective. And that's me. We can find out what happened to your dad. Uh, you know, of course this happens after, after the kid tries to basically goes, Hey, listen, can you understand this Pokemon? How come I can understand this Pokemon and you can't. And it's, it's the original voice for Pikachu. Uh, when the other humans hear it speak, which I thought was fantastic. Uh, it just, it just, that made me crack up laughing. Uh, cause like Pika Pika, I was like, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, take me back to the nineties. Why don't you? Damn. Then we get this shot here of, uh, of Pikachu, uh, in the arms of the kid there. And it makes me think that the Pikachu uh, right there is injured is what it looks like. Cause he's holding him. He's cradling him. Like there's a problem and he's following all these Bulbasaur's, which look fantastic which look amazing. I'm a huge Bulbasaur fan. I love Squirtle. I, I love the, the first generation, right? Uh, or the first evolution Pokemon. And uh, I just, I love the designs. They look, they look wonderful. Like immediately I'm taken back to when I was a teenager, seeing Pokemon the movie for the first time, opening day uh, with my friends, drunk off my ass, but that was another story. Uh, then we get this, <laughs> we get this shot. I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. It looks like a pissed off Clefairy, if I'm, if I remember that correctly, it's, is, is that what the, is, but it's the singer and it just, it's, it's angry as shit. Somebody is passed out in an espresso bar, drinking a cup of coffee. I'm assuming hammered, uh, on the wall there, you've got, uh, I'm a champ, uh, prime ape fight that they're going to do an actual battle coming next week. And that actually, I think plays a large part into at least the middle portion of the film, right? You've got the battle between they, they, they focus, they, they kind of insinuate a bit on, uh, on, you know, a Pokemon like battle arena situation. In fact, the next shot that we see, uh, is this the best, this is the best screen grab I could get, but this is obviously a Charizard, uh, doing his thing. Total, total Charizard. Like, oh my God, I was like, oh, you know, like I remember when I was a teenager and I was hunting hard for a Charizard hologram, you know what I mean? So like just seeing the Charizard in full force, breathing fire made me just very happy in that moment in time, very happy. And we can see that it's obviously in an arena, 
Uh, it's in an arena, so there's definitely going to be something there that's going to be happening. Uh, uh, you know, obviously the battle arena situation. Uh, then we got these guys right here. I honestly, top of my head, I can't tell you what they are, but th we see these guys pop up a couple of times in the trailer. These are obviously whatever the bad Pokemon are. Because every time we see them, they're they're in the attack position. They're doing something to attack. So those guys are clearly uh, clearly bad guys. If you know what these battle toad looking mofos are, please let me know in the comments. Because I, I I'm Pokemon is so old at this point for me that when I first got into it, there was 150, right? And then and then there was 152, and then it just skyrocketed. That was like 700 something. I don't even I don't even know. I don't even know. But what we got here is you got the shot of of them uh, at. Obviously, at the battle arena, we've got uh, Pikachu, we see a, uh, a Squirtle, and then there is a chicken-looking guy back there. I do not know which one that is right there. I do not know, but he clearly, clearly is uh, uh, something that someone will probably tell me. But we can see here that they're probably going to the battle arena to maybe, like, this is where we see the Charizard, right? This is where we see the Charizard for the first time, uh, is he goes into the battle arena, and, and so I think that's the whole point, uh, with, with that whole situation. Uh, never mind the fact that we also get to see a shot, uh, a here of uh, Pikachu, uh, fighting Charizard. Charizard looking like he's going to tear his ass up. And that to me is, I think going to be a very thrilling experience, a very thrilling scene, uh, especially because I think this is going to be done in IMAX 3d. And I definitely, I'm uh, looking forward to that one because, I, it, but it also ties into this image here. When I said I think Pikachu is injured, I and the kid you can see that the kid's wearing the same outfit, right? The the black jacket and like the Pokeball shirt, and Pikachu looks injured and he's not wearing his hat, which leads me to believe that yes, we very much, very much that they this is Pikachu gets injured and they need the Bulbasaurs and whatever the whatever those little uh, mushroom things are. Uh, are going to lead it to somewhere to get like a like a to get healed up right to get uh, to get healed up is kind of what I what I think we're going to see there. Uh, so we definitely can kind of already tell that a fair amount of this movie is going to deal with like the underbelly of Rhyme City, the underbelly of whatever whatever crime has happened, the missing the t the, the the kidnapping of the main kid's father, right? Obviously, that's going to be a thing. Uh, but the best part of the trailer, obviously, is the whole Mister Mime has clearly the best part of this because he tells. Pikachu to absolutely shove it. And uh, it's a great little scene where uh, he goes, good cop, bad cop. They got this guy, they're interrogating him. They know they're not cops. They're trying to get the information. And he tells him to shove it. And it's just going to be, I think, playing up a lot of the comedy stylings of what to expect from uh, from Detective Pikachu. And like I said, this even looking again, back again at this particular image, this, this particular uh, just logo, it just seems like it feels very much in line with with what to expect from from the movie itself right i mean just everything about it to me oozes cool i mean just even go back to this establishing shot of rhyme city right this this establishing shot shows you it's it's a, a futuristic world pokemon and humans living side by side as the cartoon always shown i mean look i i didn't think that they'd be able to kind of put this out there in a way that was anything good you know what i mean like anything good i didn't think it would look good it looks fantastic it, it, people have already been saying best film 2019. I don't know if I'd go that far yet, right? We haven't seen Avengers four, uh, or Godzilla versus King, or yeah, Godzilla King of all monsters, whatever the hell it is. Uh, there's going to be a lot of good movies coming out, but this, this so far of all the trailers I've seen recently, uh, this took the cake for just what's badass. So anyway, uh, if there's things in here that I missed, let me know. If you have theories of your own, let me know. I, I really want to do more of these trailer breakdowns. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this one, uh, the Toy Story one from earlier. Uh, be sure to leave your comments. In fact, if you made it this far, type in Pikachu in the chat so I know. Uh, and again, please thumbs up the video, subscribe, and check back off for more content from me. My name is, of course, Matt Jarbo. This has been 3 Buck Theater. Uh, have yourself a great day, guys, and peace out.